guys, I'm back. I'm back after, what's that been? Two or three days of solid casting. I have made lots of these. This is a second. Um, this has got the, the mold seam on it. But yeah, I made all these engine cores for this uh, for this Airfix Hellcat and uh, sent them all out and now I've run out of resin. So um, if you've had an email from me telling you basically that you're going to be getting an email from me when I'm ready, then that's because I've run out of resin and the resin I'm using comes from Ireland. I didn't realize it came from Ireland and um, yeah, I've, I've ordered it today and this morning at nine o'clock and they're telling me it's going to be delivered on Wednesday. I'm like, I could have walked there and got it quicker myself, you know, <laughs> Jesus. So um, I then found another company that does a, a similar product, um, this next day delivery, but I, I didn't want to chance changing the resin because I know the resin I'm using is is really nice. It's uh, it's a really nice quality resin. It's um it's a polyurethane and it's uh it's lovely. It's really really nice, and it's, it's nice to work with as well. It's not all um some resins are very very brittle and some are very soft. This is like sort of nicely in the middle. It's lovely, and uh, really you know you can when you sand it, it doesn't just tear chunks out of it and it doesn't just chip off easily on the corners. So yeah, really pleased with it. So. We finished with the resin for now and the bench is back as a modeling bench instead of a engine manufacturing station and we've got the Hellcat back and here's the uh, here's the wing section if you remember I glued the top on and then removed it because of the um, I noticed that all these things whoops I noticed all these things were out so luckily because I've got two kits I've got the luxury of being able to take them off scrap them and then use them out of the other kit because obviously this one is having droop flaps and the other one is having flaps up so I had a spare set of both actuators so you can see on there I've done the ejector pin marks on them and um, what we have to do is make sure we look in the instructions so we remember which way they go I think it's P1 on the outside I think it's the one on the outside and two on the inside where is it? it's back here so it's uh, yeah, it's one on the inside, and two on the outside. That's okay then. So it's one, one, two, two. So that's okay. And these parts are I've got it marked on them, which is really nice. So um, what I'm going to do is just put these in here with a with a slow setting glue. Um, I'm trying to think what the slowest setting glue I've got is. In fact, no, I won't. I won't put them in here. What I'll do is I'll glue the top of the wing on onto here and I will just sand off the glue marks there. So I'll, um, yeah, I'll glue the, the wing onto the actual main spars, I think. And then what I'll do is do the back after the same as I've done on the other one. But you haven't seen that yet because the other one, if you remember, follows this one. So let's have a look. Here we go. I think this is part 11, isn't it, guys? So, uh, yeah, and we're on 4,000 subscribers now. So, um, thanks to all you lot for uh, for bringing that on. That's absolutely amazing. Absolutely incredible. Let's get some clamps on here. Another one in there. Okay, so that's all going together lovely. This wing fits a lot nicer than the little, um, than the little, the little, uh, pieces for the folder wings. They, need, they have to be stretched over almost like a real skin. So, right, what we're going to do then is we're going to glue this down. And I'm going to peg everything first so it doesn't ooze out. If you, if you follow my channel, you know I do this a lot. I peg things and then I glue them. Otherwise, what happens is you put the glue in there. When you peg it, you get all this glue oozing out and it's clean up time so um what i'll do is just peg that there and peg that there and then i'm just going to put some glue i'm going to use my ordinary extra thin and i'm going to put some glue in the corners just to sort of tack it into place and then we'll leave that to dry a bit in the middle as well and this needs to be a very strong joint guys because your you, you fuselage this is going to glue to your cockpit floor you've got this little area here to glue to the fuselage so I think a lot of the load is going to be taken on here but it is a, if you look back at my previous videos I've done the 
fitting the um, fitting it all, and it does come out really, really nice. <clears throat> In fact, on the back here, I'm not going to worry about oozing because it doesn't matter because this is going to be covered up with another fuel tank. Yes, I had. I'm sorry, guys, I've got a terrible memory for names. One of my followers contacted me and asked about colours and sort of said, you know, would the would this initial bulkhead behind the behind the cockpit be green and then everything after that be yellow? And I thought he's got a very good point that the first bulkhead would probably be all green. And then the one behind it, the one that's just the uh, frame, that one would be yellow. So I've got to paint my cockpit again. And then when you look up in the hole, when you're, if you're having like mine with the hatch open, what you'll see is up into this area here. And in there, there's a fuel tank sort of sat behind. You've got the fuel tanks in here. And then there's another one sat here, which is filling this area here. So <clears throat> that's another little thing you have to make if you're having the belly of your aircraft open. So that's that glued on. So what I'll do is put that to one side now and let it set. All right then guys, so while this is drying, um, just filmed a bit on the FAA version, but something I want to have a look at, I need to put some more glue in that wing I think, something I want to have a look at is this. Now, I've had a few emails from people, thankfully, um, or, helpfully giving me advice on the kit thank you um, and it would appear that there is an issue with the assembly of the wings the internals the gun bays and everything so what I'm thinking is what I'll do is I'm going to build up one of the wings but this is going to be this wing is going to be destined for the this lower wing section is going to be destined for the FAA Hellcat because that one's going to be all shut up. Now, there's going to be ejector pin marks and I can just see it. But because the wings are going to be closed up, we don't need to worry about it. So I can just get on with this video, build this wing up, and then bit by bit, because I've got spare wings, we can see which of these parts, or all of them, or whatever, is causing the issue. Now, a couple of people have told me they're about to sand these parts down to get the wings to go together nicely. So. Let's have a look, let's get these parts off the sprue and let's build a wing up um, using my spare upper wing um, and let's just build a wing up and see, what, see what's happening. Okay, right, got the wings off the, off the sprue. Um, so I've got this lower wing section here which is C3. I've got the upper wing section for the folded wings here and the upper wing section for the non-folded wings here. Now, obviously this is already built, but I've got two kits, so luckily we've got a spare. Also luckily we've got a spare because, look at this wing, how it's been damaged in the box, either, it's probably after it's been moulded, um, but basically the, if, if I put it on top of this one, you can see that the the actual airfoil section is is, is all out, out of position. It's, it's, um, it's actually, it's really bad really bad so we'll have a look how that fits but we're also going to see because the whole purpose of remember this is to see how all this fits together once it's all built up into this lower wing so we basically want to see what it's going to go together like like this now I've left this on the sprue um, purely so I don't have to trim all the tabs off and everything if I should happen to drop this one or damage it or something I've got this as a spare if everything goes goes okay then this will be a paint mill um, in fact, I'll probably be using this or, or this to experiment on this, um, getting rid of this rough texture before we uh, before we do final painting. So let's get these parts off the sprue and we'll start to um, assemble everything. Now, the first thing I'm noticing um, is, like I say, that I also want to look at the fit and see what it's like down here before we start to add anything. So before we start to add any parts at all, we can see that we've got a great big step there. Now this wing also looks a little flat. It could be that that needs to come down. I don't think it does. So we'll see how it looks when it's all together. It does look like actually that's going to come get the front. It looks like this needs to come back. So it should all sort of come into line at the end of the day, I guess. We'll see, but it could be that you shouldn't paint I shouldn't glue that 
cross member there onto there until it's all uh, until it's all done. But I think probably this um, lower wing is probably been flattened as well. It looks very flat. So let's see how it all goes. Something else worth pointing out here, guys, is Airfix have done it again. Basically, all of this, everything except for the actual lower wing itself, all of it is on the G sprue. So really, really nice. Thank you, Airfix. Saves us digging around in the box. So here we're starting with G1, G10 and G11. So there's 10 and 11. Um, look at that, we don't have ejector pin marks. So we can see which is which. There is no difference, so I have to be careful here. So what I'll do is I will take... Oh, there is a difference. Yeah, one's got a lug on the front, one's got a lug on the back. I'll just check that the numbering is correct. Number 10 has the lug in the middle. Yes. So the numbering as per the instructions is correct. And there's G1 over there. No, it's not. Here's G1 here. So I'll just get that one off the sprue. Now, this needs some cleanup. It's got some um, mold seams on it. You've got all the ejector tabs as well, which are wonderful rather than ejector pin marks. Thank you. Um, but it's got some uh, it's got some mold seams all around it here, which I'm not going to worry about on this one because this is going to be eventually closed up. So. If you see me kind of rushing a bit and not worrying too much about perfect joints and a bit sloppy with the glue, that's why. It's because all of this is going to be covered up. I'm going to get my sponge and just lightly remove all the sprue nibs. There we go. That's that done. And same on here. I have to use a hard stick on here so I don't lose the square edges. Because if you remember, this is all just an exercise just to see. It's my skinny stick. Just to see how this all goes together and see what the actual issue is. Because uh, unfortunately, generally, when you find an issue, it's too late and you don't know what's actually caused the problem. So if I need to get the other wing out that's not so flat as this one, then I will do. But if I've got a flattened wing, no doubt other people have as well. Um, I literally, you know, I, I I pulled these kits off the shelf at Antics and pulled them out of their wooden, their wooden box. They're big cardboard boxes. And uh, so I know they haven't been um, mishandled or nothing's been put heavily on top of them or anything. So... That's going like that and this one is 11 because it's got this lug here this little lug here you can see it's on the back so that one's gonna go in there like that so just get some glue over here drop of extra thin in there and then number 10 is going to go next to it. Drop an extra thin in there. So that's our gun bay started. And then this is going to glue into the lower wing section. Now, what they're telling you here is to draw these holes if you're going to use rockets. Um, this one's not going to use rockets. I'm not sure if the British use these rockets or not. So I don't know whether I need to put the actual rocket mounts on or whether I'm going to have rockets or not. I don't think I'm going to have rockets on this one. So we'll leave that off. Um, we'll have it all just nice and smooth. So we'll have this one uh, with bombs rather than rockets. So this is going to glue into this bay area here. Oh, I see. I thought the way they were talking, I thought this was going to cover everything up. And what I'm telling you here is to paint this interior green, which I don't need to do at the moment. There we go. So that's just going to press down into those holes there. And it's a bit of a... Yeah, that pin on the back is an interference fit in that hole, so you won't be able to dry fit it. 
Now, just checking these ejection chutes, and they all look fairly clear. They need a bit of a clean up in the smaller holes. There's a little bit of flash around the edges. And there we go. And back on the subject of those resin engine cores, guys. Basically, as a rule of thumb, I can tell you that if you've paid me, your engine core is on the way. So, if you haven't had an email from me saying, I'll, I'll let you know when I can make them, and you've paid me, then your engine core is on the way. If you haven't paid me, it's because I haven't asked you to pay me and that means that you're not going to get yours made until at least next Wednesday if what they're telling the delivery dates is true that means I'll be sending it off to you so you will actually in America it'll be about seven days so you'll probably get it like Thursday week next Thursday week and in the UK you should start seeing them Thursday Friday see how many more orders come in it's um it has been manic but with the money from that I'll be able to buy the the 124th scale car door typhoon now I'm going to make sure this is all properly and securely glued in so that there's no doubt the way we've done this has caused any issues okay now as I say I'm pushing all this down and glue is squishy and I'm not worrying about it because it's not going to be seen so that's all down like that now that down nicely okay and now we've got to put these in so I'll get these off the sprue and get those glued in all right guys I found an issue straight away these this is number three these are these could you see what I'm doing here let me just check yeah you can these are the um, longitudinal ribs that go in the gun bays these are for the ammunition bays I think and number three is the front one that's what this one is here and when you put them in they are quite a tight pressing fit and I noticed that it wasn't quite going down all the way and there's a mold seam all around the inside of these little slots here there's a mold seam all around them so basically gone in with a knife and just literally just give them a little scrape just in the bottoms just to make sure that mold seems gone and then it seems to sit down a lot better all along the wing and it sits flush with the skin of the wing then so I think that could be possibly problem number one we'll see and then what I'll do is put a some glue along here just to get it to go down but it is quite a uh, quite a snug fit those so I'm just going to check now these these sit in these ribs up here so I'm just going to check when this goes together yeah that sits straight into that groove on there so that's fine check on this one yep straight into that groove in there so we'll do this bit by bit and we'll see at the end of the day we'll probably all of a sudden find a part that doesn't fit so go from there with that one so I'll get four and five in and we'll go along, move along okay number four this is the middle one is really tight on the back end so what I suggest it starts off looking like this it's got that it's got that nib off for you that ejection tab it starts off looking like that cut that nib off and it goes in a lot easier and also you need to get a knife in there and just widen up that slot where it presses down in it's an extremely tight fit almost like it's going to snap so just widen up that and it slots in done the same on that with the removing the mold seam from the grooves so that one now fits like a treat so in a minute we can try this 
on the upper wing and see what it looks like. So we'll try on this one first. You've got these little tabs, there's no eject and alignment pins, it's all these um, tabs and slots which is cool. So how's that lined up? And that's gone straight into the groove it's supposed to go in, so no fit issues, fit issues yet. Okay and then on number five, the, 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 sorry number four which is the, uh, oh that's where I've gone wrong then. So five goes in the middle. That could be where people are going wrong. It's four, five and three. Three's at the front, four is at the back, and five is in the middle. Okay, there we go. So that could be a mistake that people are making. I'm not sure it makes any difference. Like they look to be all the pretty the same. No, the, the rear one is actually slightly smaller. So that could be the mistake that people are making. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm not the most intelligent bloke in the world, but you know, you would, I think your mind sort of tells you that uh, three, four, five, you know, not three, five, four. So that one's kind of leaning back a bit. I don't know if it's supposed to, but it but it is. So let's see how that fits now in the three slots. So we'll line up our front tabs on the leading edge, pull it together, and that all lines up in those three slots lovely. So there we are. Note that one is leaning back, so Maybe when you do this, clamp this up like this and allow it to dry with it all clamped in that position. So see if I can get something on there. I'm not sure I've got anything that will reach. What I'll do is just put it down on the bench and put some weight on it. Like so. Let it just go off. Okay, so G12 in the next section. It's actually got ejector pin marks on it, but they're on the back face. It doesn't matter. Um, the G12 uh, is going over the end of these ribs and sort of lining them all up. Uh, what I've had to do is take a little bit of plastic from the bottom of each slot, okay, just like we did on the other parts. And then what I've also done is just gone down the sides and just removed a slither of plastic from this, each side of each slot because basically they are a very tight fit and now they're a nice sliding fit and you can see it's up either end because the wing is flattened but in the center and the spar area there it's down so I'm happy with that so I'm just going to put some glue in the middle I don't want any glue to get on the outside outside of those three spars and set because it'll stop the wing taking on its, its proper curved shape okay so we can try that again now. As I say, we're going to try this at every single part to see what happens. So now the wing is starting to need a bit of pulling about. And unfortunately, what happens here, when you pull the back of the wing down, it bends that because there's no support there. Although there's probably a rib going in there now, isn't there? So let's have a look at that. So G13, which is here. That doesn't get cut off. Okay, so there we go there. mold seam in there. Again we've got ejector pin marks on here. I'm not sure they're going to be seen. And then this is going to go over there. Now again we've got you can see how that's rocking on there. Now I'm not sure 
I'm actually going to take some material from here. So I'm not over the moon with how that's gone down. Yeah, that's got rid of that. I don't want it to rock. It's, it's going to be a gap here because the wing is flattened. It's going to be a gap here and here. But in the middle here, I want it to be down flat. And it is. So we'll just put some glue on there. I don't need to have it madly glued in place because everything's going to hold it in when it's all sandwiched. So let's just try, I'm going to take that um, ejector tab off. So let's just see how this looks now. We'll line up our leading edges again. And now When we pull the wing over, we still get that lifting there. OK, I didn't have those three. There we go, that looks lovely now. So basically, yeah, it's all flattened and out of shape. But when you actually put these in, it's giving it its shape. Now, it appears to be fitting together beautifully. Um, let's try it on this awfully flattened wing here. And again, in that area where, where everything is, it's fitting together absolutely fine. So I don't really see what the issue is. I think it's possibly a case of not cleaning up the mould seams and um, not checking your fits as you go and making sure everything sits right down. Because as you know, I've had to clean out the bottom of every single slot on here. So. These little slots in here, in here, in the bottom of all these here. I've had to clean out all the slots. And also this actual gun bay base took a lot of pushing down to make it actually go down. So, um, yeah, there we go, guys. I think, I think that's that. Now this... That's how this is going to go together. And that little rib there. Luckily I'm having all this closed up so it doesn't matter. But if you're having it opened up, you would have to glue that down um, to pull it down into shape. I don't know what it's like on this one. I'm talking about this little rib that goes across here. There we go, that's all fitted together now. Yeah, so certainly on my kit, um, and on this actual full width wing, the fit is beautiful. All I can think goes, as I say, mould seams, cleaning out the slots, and also, I wouldn't be surprised if somebody's gone three, four, five, and five is taller than three, than four, obviously because it's in the middle. So if you've gone three, four, five, which your mind would tell you to do, then that could be the problem. So let's get on these. I'll get this spar, this spar here built up, and then we'll see where we go. Right. So I've got these spars off now, and um, this is a two-part assembly. You see down here they glue together. Um, lots of cleanup on there. Lots of little sprue nibs and bits and pieces to come off. So make sure you've got all that off because that will uh, will greatly affect the fit, as you uh, as I'm sure you're aware. And here as well, we've got all the um, the sprue nibs on that one as well. Um, if you want to, if you're having your gun bays open and you want to really make this pop, something I might suggest you look at is check your references. It looks like this is possibly two sheets of metal with plunged holes, and the plunged holes don't meet. But in the kit, they've got them sort of moulded up so they do meet. Um, now I'm not sure if they do meet. Maybe they, maybe they, they do. If they don't, it'd be easy on this one because it's in two halves to just remove the material from the inside, and it would actually make it look like a proper thin sheet metal structure then. So um, we'll look at that and uh, we'll look at that when we do the gun bays on the actual, um, on my actual proper wings for this one. So this is quite a snug fit and now it's gone, oops, solid. Um, and again, I'm not getting, see I've got this rock and it's not going down. 
So that means that slot needs to be de deepened. Um, now it would probably be easier to deepen the slot on here because it's thinner plastic. So what I'm going to do is just take, it doesn't really matter how much you take out because you want that spar to sit down on that wing, not be suspended above these. Or by these should I say. So I'm just going to cut out some plastic from the bottom of there like so and then this bar should slot down on there and there we go now you can see it's actually sitting no it's still not down on that wing so something else is stopping it we need to find out what it is Okay, and as the wing pulls up together, as you pull the shape of the wing up together, it looks like it does actually pull into shape. But it looks like it needs some material at the back of that groove. It looks like it's kind of pushed forward. So I'm just going to take a shaving off of there. Again, remember, if this one was going to have open gun bays, we'd have to be a lot more careful doing this. I'm just doing this as an experiment so that you guys can see my findings on getting this wing to go together because people are having problems okay there we go that's sitting down in there lovely now and the spar the spar actually appears to be too wide it doesn't appear to slot into that groove very neatly so what i'm going to do you could do this whether you've got the gun bays exposed or not. It's just remove just, just this front sharp corner just to sort of narrow down the actual narrow down the actual width of the base of the thing. To help it go into that slot. You can see now that it's actually going down into that slot now, it's not sitting on top of it. Um, and it does appear that maybe that spar is a little too high in that area. So let's see what it's like with the wing on. With the upper wing on, should I say. Yeah, it looks like it's too wide on the top as well. I don't know if you can see that there, but it looks like it's not actually sitting in that groove. So what I have to do is remove some material from the back corner. To make it fit in there a bit nicer. So let's see what it's like now. Still a very very tight fit in there. You've also got these two yeah they're going to affect your fit those lugs there so they need to be just taken back a touch. The upper wing dummy. Okay, so it's still not falling into place. It's um, I think what I'm going to do is put an angle on the front of that where it hit, where it comes along. Like so. Oops. I'm 
what I'm doing is just removing the sharp corner from there. So instead of it coming on 90 degrees and long, it comes along 45 because it's, it's, it appears to be fouling on the front edge of the um, of the actual spar. And it's still not going down in there. Let's just um, take some material from there. That's better. There we go, it appears to be fitting in in there. So let's uh, let's put this in here, push it down into the groove where it belongs. Okay, that's better. And then try this on the upper wing. There you go. So there is your issue, guys. So make sure you go 354, not 345. This front spar needs a bit of work. Basically, it's too. Let's have a look. Let's go over this for you again. These slots aren't deep enough, so deepen the slots in here. I've removed some material from the sides of these slots to make it a sliding fit rather than a like a 10 ton press fit. I've sanded the front corner, okay, so instead of it being an acute angle on there, it's like 90 degrees, just on the front corner there, so it's just literally like this with your sanding stick, and just basically put a chamfer on there, take the corner off so that it can fit down in that groove, it doesn't matter because it's not going to be seen in that area anyway, so then that will fit down in there, and also on the top, what I've done is chamfer this, this, um, this side and this side on this end, and I've chamfered it all the way down on there to make it fit into the upper wing. And then when we can put this in, like so, we can get it to go down nice and snug, sit in the groove in the lower wing, and then it will actually press on. It will fit on there beautifully. And I'm not hardly using any force to hold that in. And it's just sitting there, and I've got no issues with gaps anywhere. So that's all fine. Now let's try it on this bent wing. So that's going to fit in like that. Let's get the leading edge lined up. Okay, so the leading edge is lined up almost. There we go. And then we can pull the trailing edge down to meet. There we go. So it's fitting in there as well. We've still got that issue there, but it's because the plastic's all bent and bowed. So that's cool. Now then, this rear spar. Let's see what this one looks like. Now that's a much looser fit. It's In fact, it's a perfect fit. I just clipped into place. It's gone straight down. Now, is it going to fit into the upper wing? Yep fits in there perfectly. There's an ejector pin mark there but it doesn't matter because it gets covered with a box. So that's gone in like that but it's it's actually okay. So it's all looking good at the moment. So let's try it in this wing first because it's the correct shape. Get a leading edge lined up. Push it all together, and there we have it, guys. That appears to be it. Yeah, it's um, that's absolutely fine. It's taking a bit of pulling because the lower wing section is flattened. So let's see how it looks on here. Get the leading edge lined up.
that's gone in there like that and then that's all going to pull down like that so yeah I'm going to have to do something with this that's um for some reason that's way too low there so oh it's, it's not Yeah, it will go down. Just going to need a bit of persuasion and um, locking into place, I guess. But uh, there we go. So I'm happy with that fits. And I'm happy with how those gun bays are going to look at the end of the day. You can you still clicking and clipping into place. There's so much to fit together, guys. Um, yeah, that needs a bit of sanding on the end of there but it's so much to fit together you've got slots and grooves and parts going everywhere so there you are so there we go that's the uh, I think that's the um, issue sorted on that so yeah make sure it's all sanded make sure it all fits in all the slots in both sides before you glue anything and also, I don't know how this is going to come out of here now. And also, um, make sure you go 354, not 345, which your mind will tell you to do. Right, back to our uh, main wing section now. So now that this is um, dried, I've got the clamps off, and now we're going to put these parts in as they tell you to do back in step 61. I'm going to put them in now. So I'm going to start off by putting P2 in. Now we need to be careful we get this right because that is actually that way up. So P2 is going to go on this side. So P2 is going to slot into here like so and get held in with the top wing. Okay, so I can take my extra thin, put a tiny drop on here just to hold it in place. And then I can hold the top wing down there, get a paintbrush, get some extra thin on the paintbrush and then get that into there to weld that in. Okay, so that's in there now. And then I want P1, which goes inboard, and that's just going to push in. like so and then I can push that one down in pushed it in too far I can push that one down in with the upper wing again using the paintbrush be careful if you use a paintbrush guys if you get a load of glue it might drip off onto your model make sure there's no glue on the ferrule the ferrule is the steel part in case you didn't know Okay, so just hold that like that, just let them sort of get themselves locked into place and then with the holding the upper wing surface down we can manipulate them and get them square and get them so they're looking all nice and straight and everything. I'm happy with that. So I'm going to put some more glue on that back one. Alright, then we can come along then, get a clamp on here, maybe get a clamp on here, yeah perfect, and then I'm going to put some extra thin carefully in here, now I'm going to be careful on my FAA when I'm not too fussed about it because the flaps are up and you won't see this area. On this one I want to make sure I just touch and go. Oops. Probably this airfix plastic being so soft when you get a drop of glue like that on a normal like Tamiya kit or something it wouldn't leave a mark but on this one it does so you need to be a little bit more careful than uh, than normal. Of course I'm doing this on camera so it's it's not so easy for me to see what I'm doing. I would normally have it back here. 
if I was doing it back here, that would be a lot of fun for you guys, would it? <laughs> okay, so that's those in. Just move that peg round. And just one final check. Yep, they're all good. And then I'm going to get in there with my paintbrush. And I'm going to glue these to the upper wing. And that will also help give the upper wing some strength. Okay, so I've only done the trailing edge at the moment. Once that's gone off, then I can concentrate on the insides of the wheel bays and stuff. So we've done that one now. S2 is our outboard one, so we want S. We want S2, the outboard one first, sorry. So just push that one into there. Hold it in with the upper wing. Drop a glue. In there like that. And then Hold in and get them nice and square and everything. And then I'm going to get my paintbrush, go inside. Pegs in the way. Just want to get in here, make sure they're glued in nice and solid. They're held in. Now I can turn this over, get a couple of clamps on it, same as the other side. position again. I guess really it would be sensible to have the flaps here and make sure they're going to fit. I might do that. I might get the flaps or well, part of the flap off the sprue in a minute and have a look. Just to check. And that, my friends, is that. So, I'm not sure how long this has been, but I'm going to call that a day for this video because I think we've learnt a lot. Um, certainly about how to build these wings up and get them to fit nicely. And uh, obviously we've also learnt that you shouldn't glue this down onto here until you've got the lower wings on. Um, it's going to need some manipulation. I'm going to have to do some sort of pulling about it's something to do with these tubes in here the, the, the first part of this stage where you work where you well where you glue these in I think that's the biggest issue is um, perhaps not gluing them in until this stage now and because uh, if you remember I they wanted to no, yeah they wanted to pull the ends up which is what I'm having to do so it's partly my mistake I think for doing this uh, like this so um yeah, thanks for watching this and uh, I'll be back soon with more and we'll do a proper gun bay build and everything. I've also got to get that cockpit finished off for you, which will be part 8C. Um, we've also got the FAA on the go, as you know. And of course, you know about the resin engines. So, <laughs> there we go. So um, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, I'm Nigel from Nigel's Modeling Bench. Thank you to all my subscribers. Thank you for helping me hit 4,000. Thanks to all the people donating on Patreon. Um, particularly one guy who has been extremely generous. You you want to remain anonymous, so I won't mention your name. But um, 
somebody has just uh, given me quite a, quite a large donation to to go towards the camera and we're, we're nearly there I'm probably three quarters of the way there now depending on what I go for but I'm um, thinking watching Phil for I won't mind something that I can have a remote control with and zoom in and out that's what he does and then has it on the screen while he's doing it so anyway we'll see um, but yeah thanks for watching this has been part 11 uh, part 12 will be with you very soon and we'll do some more work on the engine and start looking at all the control services and stuff as well so I'll see you soon bye bye